Hello and welcome to Chai with Lakshmi. In this episode, you are meeting the founders of Bangalore Rock Thermal and Aquater. First, here's a little musical treat for you from them. Rajiv, so tell me about this number that you've just performed. Well, this, this one is called uh, Simply B, composed in 2006, 2007-ish, I don't remember exactly when. We've played it a lot and um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it is a special song like a lot of our other songs as well. It kind of relaxes us out and it's all, it's all about talking about being in the moment. Yeah, the interesting part about the song is it, it goes from a nice groovy, catchy uh, verse chorus thing to a bass solo. And yeah, very few songs have bass solos. You know, sometimes in, in, in Jan you're, you're, you're worth a million dollars and then by March you're down in the dumps and, and then again in, in, in probably September you're back up and things happen in life all the time. So Simply Be is, is all about just being in the moment, enjoying that particular moment and having a blast. Great. And talking about Simply Be, mm -hmm. uh, how has 15 years of Simply Being been? <laughs> Oh, mind-blowing. Uh, obviously, being together, uh, doing what you love the most with the people that you love the most for, for so long is, is, is quite uh, unique. Not too many people get that uh, chance and we are thankful to whatever forces that are keeping us going. No, it's awesome. I was, we were, I was watching this documentary about U2 uh, the other day and how they've stuck together for something like 30, 35 years now when so many other bands that formed at the same time have just sort of fallen by the wayside, so to speak. And all the all the stuff stuff they've gone through, every every band has has that. You know, you go through ups and downs. There are times when the people like you. There are times when everything you do seems wrong. There are times when you have money. There are times when you have no money, and all of that. But uh, there is something here. I mean, when when musicians get together and form a group, the whole is always bigger than the sum of the parts. You know, and you create something that's bigger than you sometimes. It feels like there's so much more to do. It feels like we've just begun. So what has it meant to transition from being part-time musicians to full-time musicians? I mean, what triggered it? Any, any, any sort of profession in the arts, it's kind of difficult sometimes. Um, if you have a family to support and you have EMIs to pay and cars to buy and all of that stuff, you need, as they say, a, a steady income. Um, and sometimes being a musician, it's not the easiest thing to have. In this country, doing what we're doing, there is no defined route map. And it's not that it's very different abroad. Even there, there are um, enough musicians who have to have day jobs to support their, you know, their, their bills and so on. So uh, it feels incredible. It feels incredible to finally, uh, when people say, what do you do? And I say, I'm a musician and that's all I do. I don't do anything else. Um, I teach music, yes, but that's also being a musician of some, of some sort. And is the Academy a way also to keep it a full-time music thing? The Academy actually is um, sort of grew organically. I've been teaching for about eight or nine years now. I, I enjoy it very much. And um, the Academy grew out of, uh, a student of mine put it very nicely recently. He said, man, you guys are, are giving us what you never had. I mean, when we were starting out as a band, there, we didn't have a good music school where we could go and learn to play our instruments. We didn't have a good music store where we could go and buy quality instruments. We didn't have a place to rehearse without bothering our neighbors and so on. And we didn't have a place to play. In the sense there were no venues, there was no, there was no way to play the music you were writing to an audience. And now you can see all those things are slowly sort of crystallizing. Now we have great schools, we have places to rehearse. You can come in and plug in and play it as loud as you want without bothering anybody. You have, st you have stores where you can buy great instruments and you have several small venues around town now you can go and play your music to people. So it's, uh, we, it's, it's really great to be part of this thing. It's just a very small beginning. I mean, many more things like this have to happen before a real difference is made. It's, it's, uh, I feel really proud to, to, be part of, to be part of something. You have created something. I mean, you walk into this place and you know there's 
it's a labor of love. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's gone into it, a lot of thought, a lot of time, a lot of money, and <laughs> you know, all of that. It's amazing that we have this place, you know, it's our space, and we, we just sort of want to tell people all the stuff we've learned across 15 years of playing. It's just pretty much self-taught, and so you learn the hard way, and sometimes learning the hard way is good because you can, you know, you can break things down really well and put it together backwards or sideways or upside down, or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, from the urban perspective, I think Tone and Quarter is a voice of modern urban India. And we have songs that talk about this identity also. There's a song called Look At Me, which says, you know, yeah, I'm, here I am, brown eyes, black hair, never mind the goatee. And, uh, you know, I'll listen to heavy metal in the morning and go home and eat Thayar Sadam at night. You know, it's just, it's just amazing, this, this, this thing that we have. It's a, I think it's unique anywhere in the, of course, I mean, every situation that way is unique, but I think India is one of the most interesting places in the world today. It's incredibly interesting because of its, of where, it, where it's come from and what it's so quickly going to. And it is. From heavy metal to Tair Sadam to Bangalore rock and chai at the street corner, India is the place. Good luck to Thermal and a Quarter and the Thak Academy in growing bigger and staying together.